People say control of fire is the most important achievement that we as a species had learned. We use fire to cook, and that greatly helps us digest food. We use fire as tools. We also use fire as a weapon. Chimpanzee and bonobo had also been observed to grasp the idea of controlling fire, to some extent at least. However, what if an animal uses fire as a weapon, just like us humans? Wouldn't that be devastating? So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is Firehawk? <coughs> to make this video as comprehensive as I could, let me tell you about wildfire first, just in case you didn't know. Wildfire is a phenomenon where a fire started and spread rapidly in a habitat with combustible vegetations. The name could vary based on where it starts. For example, forest fire, bush fire, desert fire, grass fire, etc. Those are all wildfires. Now, some of you might think the cause of wildfires is human carelessness. While yes, perhaps nowadays that is mostly the case in human populated area, wildfires do happen naturally. Most of the time, it's caused by lightning strikes. However, it can also be caused by sparks started by falling rocks, or even spontaneous combustions of vegetations. Yes, those are real phenomena, especially for those plants that we extracted vegetable oils from. Natural wildfires are especially prevalent in regions with Mediterranean climates. And, perhaps surprisingly to some people, the taiga forest. Wildfire will stop naturally if it runs out of heat, fuel, or oxygen. Because wildfires are natural phenomena, organisms evolve and adapt to it. Some native plants are especially resilient or even resistant to wildfires. That makes them persist and dominant in said area. To put it simply, wildfires benefit them by eradicating their competitor. Not only plants, animals also adapt to wildfires. The most generic adaptation is fleeing. Wild animals are generally afraid of fire. Animals scattered away from affected area. Birds have it easy because they can fly. Some small animals burrow to protect themselves and resurface after the fire is out. Meanwhile, some animals evolve to take advantage of wildfires. The most famous examples are pyrophile insects. For example, Melanophila acuminata. They can detect wildfires and take advantage of it to nest on burnt trees. You know, predators are gone, so their offsprings could safely grow. Areas affected by wildfires are usually quite open after the fire is gone, which is intuitive, of course. This benefits grazers that prefer open areas, at least until the vegetations regrow. Another adaptation, which is relevant to the title of this video, is Fire foraging Fire foraging is a foraging strategy employed by predators to cut the escape route of fleeing prey. Like I said, animals will escape wildfire, and panicking prey are susceptible to ambush. Many animals are observed to employ this strategy. For example, foxes, bears, wildcats, and the most infamous ones, birds. Wading birds are known for their fire foraging behavior. This includes herons, egrets, ibises, storks, and spoonbills. Another group of birds that are well known for their fire foraging strategy is eagles and falcons. They are often seen circling around wildfires to pick up escaping prey. Some of them don't stop at this point. They intentionally spread the wildfires themselves. Those that do so are called firehawks. Let's talk about them further, but before that... So, what the firehawks do is, they locate wildfires, grab burning branches or grasses, and then drop it somewhere else. That will start another fire, spreading the wildfire even further. Quite simple, but effective. There are also some reports that they do this in groups each carrying their own sticks. Some even reported that firehawks locate man-made fire, 
so they basically can cause a wildfire, not just spreading it. As of now, firehawks are exclusive to Australia. There are three different species that receive the firehawk title. Those are the black kite, Milphus migrans, whistling kite, Haliastrus fenurus, and brown falcon, Falco berigora. However, other species are also reported to employ this strategy. For example, the square-tailed kite and brown ghost hawk. There are tons of sightings of this behavior by the native aboriginal people from various ethnic groups and regions. Some non-aboriginal people also allegedly witness this behavior, including some academic researchers. Their specific observations are documented in this publication right here. However, as of now, there is no conclusive evidence, at least not that I know of. There is no captured video of this, not even a photograph of them carrying and dropping burning sticks. Which is why most are skeptical about these remarks. That is understandable, of course. Good scientific information is based on empirical evidence, after all. Another questionable thing is also the fact that somehow these observations are only available in Australia. What's so special about Australia? Why don't these birds do the same in other regions? Because they do exist in other regions, after all. That's why some skeptics are saying this is just a local myth in Australia that causes a positive confirmation bias on this behavior. Even if the occurrences of a hawk carrying and dropping burning sticks do truly happen, some people thought there is a chance that all of those are somehow incidental. Because, you know, maybe they carry sticks and then it's too hot for them and they drop it midway. Quite rational, I guess. But that's also a questionable claim, if I do say so myself. I mean, what's the original intention for picking up burning sticks and fly away carrying those in the first place? So many questions. And now, the question is, why are there no evidence? Well, that's because researching this can be quite dangerous. Seeking to document this occurrence would mean you are actively seeking wildfires. That means you are putting yourself in danger. I'm sure you've seen or heard a news of storm chasing turns up bad. This one is quite similar, but fire instead of wind. So yes, would you risk your life for that? That's the question. Unless you are fire immune, or maybe you are a character from a story and fire somehow won't touch your body. But this is real life, you know. Even if you install cameras on wildfire spots, the cameras could be incinerated by the fire, and no evidence will be received anyway. That would waste a lot of resources, especially money. In theory, you could induce the start of wildfire, or perhaps even set up something that can induce firehawks to do their thing. But the problem is, would it even pass the ethical clearance? I mean, you are potentially putting others in danger after all. And also, if you induce said behavior, would that be a good proof that such behavior occurs naturally? It will still be debatable. So yeah, proving this is tricky. Me personally, I believe these birds at least have the capability to do so. Birds are known to be clever after all, especially birds of praise. But still, I would not truly believe it until conclusive evidence are provided. If it is proven to be true, that would be very interesting, because they should also exhibit this behavior outside Australia. And think about it, perhaps there are more obscure myths or hearsays about animals that are actually true but not well documented. That's if, though. Big if true. We'll have to wait and see if we'll eventually get some evidence. For now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, no, there is no fireproof animal. Or at least, not that we know of. If you stumbled upon an article that claims so, that is most likely a clickbait. Anyway, enjoy your day.